can restart once you guys go away. Delay, indecision, and inaction could lead to a massive and sudden harm. It simply makes no sense to wait any longer. Take action before it's too late. We will not wait. As President Bush has said, time is not on our side. I still thought that three and a half months for new inspections was a rather short time before cooling day. And especially when we now see that they, they say, the U.S. government is saying that, look, you have to have a bit of patience, you know, these things take time. Preemptive war by its very nature is something that is, is entirely new to the United States of America and to what we call the, the old Western alliance. Uh, let's, you know, you go back through history and, and at the Peace of Westphalia in, in, in 1648, a, a group of nations that had just killed most of each other off decided that this isn't quite the way to do it. And they came up with a set of laws that we've all lived with fairly well uh, since then, uh, which doesn't much allow for preemptive war. I think the real reasons behind the Iraq War lie in a, a almost a, a kind of philosophical and geopolitical vision of the neoconservatives uh, who dominate our foreign policy establishment today. And that is the belief that the United States does dominate the world as the world's sole superpower, that it, ha it must assert its power globally, uh, everywhere, and that anyone who resists this or defies American power is absolutely unacceptable and becomes automatically very much the enemy. The theory that you can bludgeon political grievances out of existence uh, doesn't have much of a track record. Uh, and uh, so essentially we, are, we have been neoconned into applying a uh, school of thought about foreign affairs that has failed everywhere it's been tried. So by the late 1990s, let alone 2003, it was clear that Iraq did not have a nuclear weapons program. But over and over again, President Bush, Secretary of Defense Rumsfeld, particularly Vice President Cheney, but also National Security Advisor Condi Rice, drummed up the idea of a reconstituted nuclear capability and particularly the notion that I think has some resonance among the American people of the mushroom cloud. For those who are advancing a different doctrine with which I strongly disagree and that was that the United States could take unilateral preemptive action. But if you believe in unilateral preemptive action, it certainly has to be in response to an imminent threat. And the idea that Saddam Hussein could have nuclear weapons uh, was a, a, a truly an imminent threat, and nothing more graphically uh, uh, pointed that out it, 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 except the most powerful argument that was made, let's not let the smoking gun be a nuclear cloud. If someone is waiting for a so-called smoking gun, it's certain that we will have waited too long. We don't want the smoking gun to be a mushroom cloud. We cannot wait for the final proof, the smoking gun that could come in the form of a mushroom cloud. So a lot of people who supported the war in Iraq actually believed that Iraq had the capability to fire missiles that could reach the United States carrying payloads of nuclear or chemical or biological weapons. Iraq has never had the capability to do that. They didn't have it in the first Gulf War. They didn't have it in this uh, war in Iraq and they don't have it uh, in any way of getting it in the future. That very first day on September 12th, one day after September 11, uh, the meeting that was held in the White House, in the Situation Room, uh, led to Rumsfeld asking the question, shouldn't we use this as an opportunity to do something about Iraq as well? There are Al-Qaeda in Iraq. Saddam Hussein, um, cavorts with terrorists. Secretly and without fingerprints, he could provide one of his hidden weapons to terrorists or help them develop their own. Well, the war really had absolutely nothing to do with terrorism. Uh, there was no connection whatsoever between Iraq and the secular regime there and the religious fanatics who perpetrated 9-11. Saddam was not a maniac or a fool. He was a terrible villain, yes, but he was not going to sacrifice his own life and the future of his country to stupid adventures with terrorists who had completely antithetical views to his. It is just inconceivable to anybody who understands Saddam Hussein and understands the nature of highly centralized dictatorships generally 
that uh, dictators would want to give up control of their most potent weaponry. Because once you've given up control, you have no control. So you can't say to Al-Qaeda, you will use this or you won't use it. The decision on whether or not they're going to use it depends on what Osama bin Laden does. Do you want to entrust your fate to Osama bin Laden and his nihilistic ways? I don't think so. Saddam Hussein is a psychopath and a sociopath. He was not an irrational being in the sense that he was going to um, ensure his own demise by doing something like that. Al-Qaeda has had total contempt for Saddam Hussein himself. He's been a socialist, he's been very harsh, he's treated Islamic leaders, Islamist leaders extremely harshly. Iraq, and we have very good intelligence on this, was not part of the picture of terrorism before we invaded. Saddam Hussein and bin Laden were enemies. Bin Laden considered and said that Saddam Hussein was the socialist infidel. These were very different kinds of individuals competing for power in their own way, and Saddam Hussein made very sure that al-Qaeda couldn't function uh, in Iraq, that terrorists couldn't function, except for the small northeastern quadrant of the country where there was an extremist group, but he had no control over that. It was near the Iranian border. There's no doubt that Anzar al-Islam is a radical Islamic terrorist group with ties to al-Qaeda but they operate in a part of Iraq that is not controlled by Hussein. The leaders say they seek to overthrow Hussein and his government. They are our enemy, or really they are also our enemy. We believe that Saddam Hussein, him and his group and his ministers also, they are outside of Islam's zone. The ties with Al-Qaeda was just a scare tactic to exploit the trauma, the very real trauma that the American people have felt ever since 9-11, and to associate that trauma with Iraq. As you know from the polls, most Americans believed that Iraq had something to do with 9-11, and that was a very successful, very deliberate, and very unethical and immoral operation on the part of the PR people of this administration. we meet here to consider the State of the Union. This year we gather in this chamber deeply aware of decisive days that lie ahead. Bush presented so many distorted beliefs, estimates, and guesstimates that he appears that he was misleading the public and the Congress. From three Iraqi defectors we know that Iraq in the late 1990s had several mobile biological weapons labs. What we were working on before the war was a set of cartoons, of, of sketches, if you will, of what was said by a, a defector who probably had his own self-interest at heart and was willing to tell this government whatever he thought would get him the usual million dollar reward and a settlement uh, with a uh, with new name and a nice house somewhere. Unfortunately, every reliable source of our own was unable to find anything convincing. So we were dependent on the defectors provided by Mr. Chalabi of the Iraqi National Congress. It's fascinating to see that he has been providing intelligence for many years and every checkable piece of that intelligence that's come to public notice has proven to be false, or at least self-serving in the extreme. Saddam Hussein had the materials to produce as much as 500 tons of sarin, mustard, and VX nerve agent. Any sarin that they were making in 1990, 1991, had a known shelf life of about two months. I have confirmed this with inspectors and uh, analysts who were deeply involved in the 1990s analyses. Well, if you made it 12 years ago and it had a shelf life of two months, it may not be safe to drink, but it isn't sarin nerve gas any longer. And there's no way the agency could not have known that. U.S. intelligence indicates that Saddam Hussein had upwards of 30,000 munitions capable of delivering chemical agents. Inspectors recently turned up 16 of them. Despite Iraq's recent declaration 
denying their existence. And then they tried to use uh, the 